Our next uh, speakers, yes, two are coming up here. They're a duo. They lead Bleeding Heart, Bleeding Art Industries. It's an award-winning company that's been combining art, fabrication, and FX for film, TV, ad agencies, military training, museums, and more for two decades, more than two decades. Please welcome Becky Scott and Leo Weiser. Hi. <laughs> okay, is this the right height? I don't know. What do you think? Can you, can you guys can, hear both of us? You can hear us? Great. Awesome. Okay. Keep the glasses. Keep the glasses. I, I suspect we were asked to speak tonight uh, on the theme of ignition, given our propensity to burn and blow things up. One of the true definitions of ignition. Although there will be one pyro slide here, we have to include that. We'll be talking more about what has ignited our passion for why we do what we do and the sparks in our lives that have lit our creative engines. So, here we go. Ready? You gotta hit the red one. I know, I know. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Ready? <laughs> so, to give some background and context, often when people think of the name of our business, Bleeding Art Industries, they think it's named after the blood that we make in our shop here in Calgary, and that we've been uh, manufacturing this simulation blood for over 20 years. We sell it around the world for many different industries, but they also think it's about explosions. Like this massive explosion that we did for a movie called Too Human and released as Android Apocalypse in Saskatchewan. Although pyrotechnics is a part of what we do, including being one of the only companies authorized to teach the federal pyro course to newbies to get their fireworks operator certificate, our name, in fact, had nothing to do with blood or pyro. The name Bleeding Art came about a time when the government was cutting all the funding to the arts. We as artists were starving. In fact, we were bleeding for our art because we were still creating. So there's an interesting little tidbit about our name that many people don't know about. For over 20 years, we've tried to ignite sparks community-wide. We've hosted behind-the-scenes tours for the Calgary International Film Festival, on now, by the way. And in this photo from Beakerhead 2017, students from One Beauty Academy got the opportunity to hone their special effects makeup skills on the sold out crowd that night. Leading the team is their instructor Kyra and assistant Chase, now actively working in the film industry. We've also provided many tours for schools and show them that jobs in the creative industries are open. The students don't necessarily need a, a postgraduate degree either to continue the work. So we've provided tours for students for Red Deer College, when they had a theater program, MRU, when it's they had a theater program. And we've also done workshops on animatronic special effects, makeup and fabrication. This is a problem with two people. Okay. I know. It's not just the students that get a rush out of seeing the cool things that we do. It's our next door neighbors, colleagues and others. Here we have an autopsy suit in our shop behind the scene tour, even the surgeons there gave us the thumbs up. So just a little bit about what inspired Becky and I to be in create creative. I personally spent most of my youth here under the dome. And this is the Zeiss projector at the Calgary Centennial Planetarium, the Spark for Telespark. Uh, and it was a magical place where art, science and technology were inexorably linked. I vividly remember hiding around the corner when the abominable snowman came out, this is dating me, in the 1964 Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. It was this holiday staple in our house and I can pretty much trace a direct thread and inspiration from this stop motion to our company's first film, Skeleton Girl, also Canada's first stereoscopic 3D stop motion animated short film in Canada. And for me, it was truly The Wizard of Oz, 1936 uh, MGM musical that, uh, was uh, the spark to get into motion picture special effects. The tornado scene is still one of the most uh, uh, fantastic uh, special effects uh, created by the illus uh, illusions created by the masters. Does anyone know where this is? Those roof angles and tulips can only be the Stratford Festival in Ontario. I'm here with my sisters and dad. I'm the cute one in the middle lower uh, in our fashionable 70s attire, I might add. Although they chose other careers than working in the arts, it was our parents that introduced us to theater, music, and art at a young age. So I had incredibly su supportive parents as well, both in the arts and their backgrounds, and they encouraged me to be creative. But the current su support is from these two nutballs, and there they are. Uh, 
they give me the most support. Um, one day I gave my daughter a big hug and I said, oh, my kitty. And then I corrected myself to, oh, my pumpkin. And without losing a beat, she said, I am kitty pumpkin. And such creativity totally feeds my soul. And words fell mine. In just, I just finished a big editing project for the U of C. And I can also trace that back to my mom. For me, my love of words, writing, editing, and books came from her. And she was celebrating her 80th birthday with a Scrabble cake in that slide. <laughs> and for me, uh, I look back on uh, my career and I see Bruce Schwartz. So Bruce is on the right-hand side there, and or left-hand side. And he did two shows at the Pleiades Theater in the Planetarium in the 70s. And his haunting and realistic puppets just are etched into my memories. So traveling is what is etched into mine. It opens up our worlds in ways that nothing else can. Learning new languages, experiencing different cultures, getting out of challenging situations. I think it really is one of the only ways to grow and be inundated with inspiration on a regular basis. So I was really honored last year to be a part of life with this guy. Fraggle, Fraggle Rock was actually a highlight of my career, and I hope to be working with them again very, very soon. Uh, but my in, uh, era was Jim Henson's Muppet Show. So again, the use of animated objects to create a universe uh, fascinates me with its endless potential. While Leo is more of the right brain, uh, my my day-to-day -day work involves a lot of left brain linear thinking. So I know that I need to take a break. So when I go home, write, read, bake. Uh, we live in Manton. They had a gingerbread contest. So that was a huge joy for me and gives me a spark of creativity to design things outside my regular day-to-day uh, -day work. And I was spurred on by my crazy grandmother who left me some money. And uh, what I got into was I found these incredible mentors. Dave Fitchie from Camrose is one. He brought me on and taught me how to drive steam traction engines at the Reynolds end in Camrose. And I've spent now 16 years firing steam engines across Alberta and the last three seasons driving the locomotive at Heritage Park. Leo and I moved to Nanton five years ago, and that was a turning point for us. Although we have our feet and our shop here in the city, which we love, our perspectives have been widened being out in Nanton. It gave me the opportunity to flex my creative skills more and my love of photography developed, and I've gotten interested into protecting the environment more. So uh, Imagineering, Illusion, Entertainment, Mechanics and History landed me as the president of the Canadian Grain Elevator Discovery Centre in Nanton. Uh, we light up the elevators each holiday. We are now promoting concerts, festivals and other events. And building a world-class museum uh, is my latest calling. And we're using all the tools given to me by the years to uh, work in the cultural industries. So we come full circle from blood and explosions to birds and back again. We've been lucky to have had, so, have had so many opportunities that have provided the spark to continue to create and do new things. If you haven't already figured it out, ignition points are everywhere. We just need to be present and open to them. Thank you. Thank you.